um, or at least for a laugh. Okay, some of you may have seen this on Facebook yesterday. Can you, uh, Maestro, play this video? And uh, here we go. A little different church than ours, but uh, maybe you saw this. Today's reading comes from the book of Proverbs. I felt that way before, okay? If I may digress for a moment from my prepared message, I mean it when I say to you, you guys, sometimes you're bad. Don't be jerks. You're supposed to be good. I'm in my office every day, and somebody comes in, and they're like, hey, whoops. I'm like, don't. <laughs> Dan, what is your deal? If anybody doesn't know, Dan is the worst. I took a vow to not say who was the worst, but it's Dan. <laughs> you guys are making me look bad in front of God. What's that? Oh, look, it's Jesus. And he said, stop it. Word of the Lord. Uh, we'll have our invitation now. Stop it! <laughs> That's funny. Really funny. Take your Bibles and turn to Acts chapter 9. I have wanted to preach that sermon before to some of you. Um, <laughs> somebody said if I did that, its stage would fall. I don't know about that. <laughs> That's right. Well, good. Are you good? Did you need that laugh? Well, good. We're going to move on here. Acts chapter 9. I'm in a new series called 4-1. And I really want to talk to you about a phrase that a friend of mine who prays for me every week sent me. And it was really a story that he talked to me about when it comes to an audience of one. What is an audience of one? Well, if you look up in Wikipedia and have several other places that I looked this week, it's really something that you prepare for when you know somebody special is going to be in the room. It's like one of those times when, when, when a group heard that the Pope was coming, or, or maybe the President, or somebody who was really special would come to town, and they were pre preparing that, that concert, or that sermon, or that speech, or, or that whatever it may have been, for that audience of that one person who was in the room. In these next few weeks, I want to talk to you about the fact that we have an audience of one around us. And who is that audience? It's God Himself who wants to connect with us, who has connected with us. Amen? Amen. Who is our Savior? Jesus. Jesus is. He sent His Son, Jesus. God sent His Son, Jesus. And, and this is the one person that we have to live for, to give glory to, who, who once desires to spend time with us. Yet so often life gets busy that we disconnect from God so that we can connect with others. Are you with me? Amen. We disconnect from the very best and miss some of the grandest, the greatest things that God is and has for you and I. So I want us to think about that. Today's message is simply called Beginning the Process. you got to start somewhere. And as we think about it today, we're looking at a guy named Paul. Really, his name was Saul at this point, And, and some things that happened in his life. But the, the phrase, an audience of one, really brought me to the, the fact to think about for one. We need to live for one. Not for us, but for him, right? Not just for us, amen? amen? It's not about us. Life is not about us. It's about God who loves us and has a plan for our lives. So in the coming weeks, we're going to look at some of that. But let's go ahead now in Acts chapter 9, beginning in verse number 1. Will you stand with me as we honor God's Word and look at the Scripture together? This is Saul's conversion. The Scripture says like the title there in my Bible. Um, Jesus said, stop it. Okay, I'm done. That was just hilarious right there. Um, Acts chapter 9, verse number 1. It says, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest and he requested letters addressing the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of the followers of the way. Who were they? Oh, the Christians, the disciples, those who were following Jesus. He was asking for the arrest of the many followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. 
As he was reproaching Damascus on his mission, or this mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down on him. Again, this is Saul. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you were persecuting. Now get up, go into the city, and you'll be told what you must do. When the men with Saul stood, or the men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. And Saul picked himself up off the ground, and when he opened his eyes, he was blind. His companions led him to the, by the hand to Damascus, and he remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Ananias, yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go over to Strayed Street, to the house of Judas, and when you get there, ask for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is praying for me or to me right now. I have shown him a vision of a man named Ananias coming to him and laying hands on him so he can see again. But Lord, explained Ananias, I, I've heard many people talk about how terrible the, of the terrible things this man has done to believers in Jerusalem, and he is authorized by the leading priest to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles, to the kings, as well to the people of Israel, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid hands on him and said, Brother... Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me uh, so that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. And he got up, he was baptized, and after he ate some food he regained his strength. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this story and Father, what it is to connect with you one on one. And I pray for those who are listening today, whether they're in this room or or Father, maybe they'll watch on TV or the internet sometime down the road. God, I pray that you would help us to understand that your love, that your life is meant to connect to each of us personally. God, I pray that those who have never connected with you would do so, just like the Bible promises, just like many of us have encountered. And we told friends, but God, I pray that more and more people would come to know you as Savior. And Father, we ask this knowing that you're able to save. You are one. You are the one. You are the one who helps us and guides us. But Father, teach us what it is to understand what an audience of one is all about. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. It's not a coincidence that this is <clears throat> um, the day that we re recognize our graduates. Many of you um, were here today, all but one of our graduates. I want you to think with me just for a few minutes of what does it take to have a successful life. Um, so I'm going to preach to Ruth. She's here on the front row, but I'm going to keep looking at everybody else, if that's okay with y'all. Um, I want you to think about with me, what does it take What does it take for you to be successful? It's not just going to be studying. And I'm, hey, I'm, you need to look at me because I'm preaching to you today. Nobody else, okay? You good? You need something to drink? Okay, I do. Um, but seriously, what, what does it take for our, our college kids or for our little children to be successful? I want you to remember that it takes the same thing that you and I as adults, as men and women, as, as followers of God need, right? And today I want to talk to you about how we connect with God. How do we connect with Him? Or how do we stay connected? Or how do we stay strong? There are some things that are essential for you and I to see and know who God is and what He's about and really to understand what this audience of one or, or for one is all about. Listen, what we value, we hold tightly to, right? Don't you try to come steal my wallet. I remember um, when I was in 10th or 11th grade, I went on my first mission trip to Mexico. And pray for Dustin, going on a mission trip this week. Pray for Casman. I remember going on my first mission trip, and we went and worked at um, some orphanages just across the Texas border in places like Reynosa and, and Matamoros, just right across the Texas border. And I remember these kids that would come up, and, and they would brush along the side of your pants. And you know what they were trying to do? Trying to get your wallet. And, and our youth minister told us, don't, don't give them any cash, okay? But there were always somebody trying. Do you know what? There's always somebody trying to get something from you. Did you know that? And there's always one enemy, an enemy, who is trying to rob us of our sight or rob us of our thoughts or rob us of anything valuable. We have an enemy. His name is Satan, right? The scripture says, John 10.10, 10, the thief comes to 
Steal, kill, and destroy, right? But Jesus comes to, have, to give you life and give it to you abundantly. Are you with me? I want you to think about that. We have a thief who's trying to rob from us, and when you and I are not focused, when we don't place a value on the right things, we're going to be in trouble. So what we value, we spend time with. Here's what David said about it in Psalms 46.10. He said, be still and know that I'm God. You got that one, Sean? Psalms 46.10. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation, and I will be honored throughout the world. Think about that for a second. Be still and know that I am God. You see, it's in the quiet, in those quietest of times, that God often speaks the loudest to us, and He changes our life. It's in those quietest of times when we hear His voice, and His voice begins to sink into our hearts, and we think about it, and we, we understand that His love is incredibly awesome. We need to understand today that God has a plan for our lives. Amen? Not only does He have a plan for our lives, He has a, pap- a passion for us and a purpose for us to follow. And unless we connect to Him, we're not going to get it. We're not going to understand what it is or where it is. So, so question, okay? Um, you know the things... Um, think about this. You know the things that I, I must remember about God. I want you to think about this. What are the things we must remember about God? Here, here's mine. It's not what He did to me or not what he did through me it's the word that he spoke to me that changed my life and I remember as as a young person as well as an adult some of the places that God took me to and he said Michael just be quiet and I'm going to unload some things you know it's in the quietness where God often speaks the loudest that often changes our life the most but here's the deal. We've got all this stuff going on around us, all this noise, if you will. We, we want to... <laughs> I love Rebecca. I do. She's my oldest baby, right? She goes to Ferrum. She's working full-time, praise God. And she's off my payroll and on somebody else's. <laughs> Amen, okay. Um, but Rebecca likes to run with that volume on the radio at 9,957, you know, <laughs> loud, right? Can you hear anything else that's going on? You say you can. I don't believe you. (laughs) But here's the deal. We run with this volume, all this stuff around us. You ever had anybody yelling at you? Yes. You ever had anybody mad at you, Ricky Foster? Yeah. Okay, we've been dealing with some of that this week. You know, all this noise around us. How's that bill going to get paid? How am I going to make them happy? How am I going to find a job or find a house or pay? You know what? We have all this stuff, and it's time sometimes that we just need to sit back and say, God, what, 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 what? Why? Because it's in that quietest of times that he often speaks the loudest and he changes our lives. Today I want to talk to you about connecting with that one, God himself. God himself. In fact, in this situation, we find this guy named Paul. At this point, his name was still Saul. God hadn't changed his name yet. And he had been a passionate guy on on a road to really get rid of all the Christians in the area. God asked for a face-to-face meeting with him, and he made an appointment. God did, and it was on a road, and God struck him blind. An incredible, incredible day in Paul's life or in Saul's life. Listen, do do you want power or influence? Well, plug into the one that's got all the power, and who is that? That's God himself. Are you frustrated with life? Been there, done that. Frustrated where you're headed? Well, maybe get some real direction. And oftentimes Google Calendar can't give it to you or some map can't give it to you. It's going to have to come from the King of Kings and Lord of Lords that we connect with. What what do we have here? We have the Bible, His Word. You know what? He wants to speak to our hearts in those quietest of times. Also, He wants to speak to our, our lives on a daily basis. And far too often we say, oh, I go to church, I hear from God, I'm a Christian. But in fact, we have not connected with Him in a long time. Because life seems to be so busy and I've got so many other things to do. I want to give you some thoughts today on connecting with God. 4-1, here you go. Oftentimes our thinking has to change. Point number one, oftentimes our thinking has to change. You ever had stinking thinking? Okay, some of you got stinking thinking. (laughs) Stop it. Okay, I tried, okay. Sometimes our thinking needs to change. If you look in this story, you're going to find Saul. Saul was one of the greatest men who ever lived. In fact, he was educated in the right places. He was from the right family. He had the best pedigree and all the right things going on for him. But he had the wrong path ahead of him. In fact, he had an opposition, someone who was opposing him. And he was actually opposing God. Maybe you've done that before. That's not something we want to do. Don't oppose God. But the the path before Saul was 
He was <laughs> totally for himself. No, he was totally for ending the people who, didn't, who were walking with God or going that direction. Let me give you just a couple of thoughts about this Saul guy. He was pretty incredible. In Philippians chapter 3, verse number 4 through 6 says it this way. He says, Though I, ha- I-, I could have confidence in my own effort, if-, if anyone could, indeed, if any others have reason for confidence in their own flesh, I even more. You see, I was circumcised on the eighth day. I'm a pure-blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of, of Benjamin, a real Hebrew if there ever was one. I was a member of the Pharisees who demanded the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without any fault. Paul said, listen, if I can get there on my own merits, if I could be saved or if I could have the best, I've got it all. But then he goes on to say, but everything I have is filthy, gross, terrible compared to the greatness of our God. Do you hear me today? Sometimes we've got to change our thinking. His direction was this. I'm going to do away with those people who call Jesus Lord. I'm going to do away with those people who are talking about Christ. In fact, here's when he tells it or what he says about it. In Acts chapter 26, verse number 10, it says it this way. And this is just what I did in Jerusalem. Not only did I lock up many of the saints in prison, having received authority from the chief priest, but also when they were being put to death, I voiced, listen to this, I voted against them or I cast my lot or I cast my vote against them. Paul said, I was going to do everything I could to do away with them. You know what? You and I may have to change our thinking. In a meeting on the road to Damascus, right there when he was on his way to do more of his bidding, when he was on his way to do away with the people of God, God struck him blind. He had time with God. (laughs) Here's a thought for you, a question. Um, Do you ever hear voices? (laughs) Some of you need to go see a doctor for that, okay? (laughs) Um, that's not the voices I'm talking about. But do you ever hear voices and you don't know who, quite who it is? <laughs> um, I, I, I like to watch some of the criminal stuff on TV, okay, like Criminal Minds. My, my favorite right now is called Blue Bloods. I don't, yeah, okay, yeah, don't got that, okay. Um, but s- sometimes you hear something and you get quiet. Turn on all the lights in the house because you're the only one there, right? And you go hunting, right? Sometimes we have to go fi- figure out where that voice comes from. And let me hear you. Listen, sometimes you have to get quiet to hear the voice. Have you ever felt like God was speaking to you, but you weren't quite sure that it was God? One of the reasons why that is, is because we haven't heard his voice in so long, we don't remember what it sounds like. Or maybe the reason why we're not sure if it's his voice is because I've never heard his voice before. And I need to come to know him because he wants to speak loud. By the way, God loves you, and he's always talking. He's like that person in your life that you always want to shut up. (laughs) He never shuts up because he always wants to tell you just a few things, and the first one is always, I love you. That's God, but sometimes it means we have to get quiet, and I have to focus on him. I'm focused on all these different things, but I'm missing the very best, and Paul was focused on the wrong things. He was going the wrong direction, but he he heard a voice. Kind of strange there. People are going to call you crazy if you talk like this. He heard a voice right out of heaven, and something amazing happened. Let me give you another story where it happened like that. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 1, there was this kid Samuel who was a blessing to his mother Hannah, and he began to hear a voice. So he went to the Eli, who was a chief priest, and he said, Eli, Eli, what do I do? 1 Samuel 3, 1. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord before Eli, and the word of the Lord was rare in those days and visions infrequent. So here's what was happening. He said, Eli, Eli, are you calling me? Three times he came back and Eli would say, go lay down and just tell God I'm right here. Speak to me. The, the scripture says here, 1 Samuel chapter 3, it says that the word of the Lord was rare. Question, are you having a hard time hearing from God? And that preacher hears from God all the time. Or, man, my buddy, they always talking about what they're hearing from God and I never hear a thing. You ever open your Bible? How about that music on the radio? Is it? You get it later, okay? You and I, we need to hear from him. And how are we going to do that? It says right here in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse number 1, that the word was rare. Let me give you two thoughts on that. Why was the word of the Lord rare? Number one, because God wasn't speaking a whole lot because the people around were not focusing on God. You see, whatever you focus on is what you listen to. Whoever you esteem is the one you listen to. When E.F. Hutton talks, okay? When my favorite preacher's on, you know what I do? I I listen, and I know your favorite preacher. Thank you very much. Boy, that was not humble at all, was it? Um, 
So rare, he wasn't speaking much. So if he wasn't speaking much, they weren't listening much. The word of the Lord was rare. Visions were rare. By the way, I, I believe that if you're not just hearing from him, maybe you're not seeing him doing anything or not feeling his presence. Maybe it's because you haven't stopped to listen. Hey, maybe you're like me. When it gets quiet in the house, what do you got to do? I got to turn on TV. <laughs> and, and, and I got to have some kind of noise. Sometimes the noise got to be closed down so I can hear from God. One of my favorite things, it's happened a lot here recently, is when it's raining outside and there, everything else is just quiet and all you can do is listen to the rain. You know, it's, it's points like that when God tends to show up, speak the loudest, and change our lives. Paul was one of those places. The voice of the Lord was rare at that point. Let me give you some factors today, too, that will help you graduates. If you want to stay close to God, if you want to stay focused on Him, here are some factors that will do that. First factor is this. Choose who you will listen to. Choose who you'll listen to. You know what? Um, some of my favorite bands are probably not the best bands in the world, but I listen to some, uh, some people. And you know what? Who do I listen to? You know what my favorite thing to listen to today at, at 45 years old? Is when this, oh, I just got a note from somebody. Thank you for the text message, but it was a good one. Is when, when that three-letter word comes across the top of my phone, and it's D-A-D, when my daddy calls. That's a good day, okay? And sometimes he's telling me things I need to do. Sometimes he just wants to ask a question. But you know, it's when my dad's connected. Do you know what God wants to do? He just wants to connect with you. And, and if you got the right phone, he, like with you version or something like that, he'll speak. God wants to speak to us, and sometimes we've got to focus on Him or put our direction back on Him. God wants us to have that, but we've got to choose who we're going to listen to. Listen, when you move away from home and move into that dorm, what, what are you going to listen to? Far too often there are so many noises around, you're going to have to shut off what you're hearing or what you're seeing so that we can see Him and hear His voice. See, it's critical who we listen to. Even listening um, is, is rare. Back in that day, sometimes it's listening... Is rare today. Um, and God may be trying to get your attention. You ever felt like that before? Sometimes it's with a rainbow. Maybe you saw that yesterday. But where are we headed? Let me give you some thoughts. Here you go. Exodus chapter 19. Um, this is God speaking to a guy named Moses. Say Moses. Probably one of the coolest guys ever to live. Um, Exodus chapter 19, verses 10 through 11, and then 19, it says, And the Lord also said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their garments. It was, it was Saturday, I guess. Ha-ha. And, and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down from Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. In verse number 19. And when the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered with them. Here's my point. Sometimes you have to make an appointment to see somebody that's important, right? God made an appointment to say, Moses, I want to speak to my people. On the third day, I'm coming. Be ready. Do you ever say, who are you going to listen to? You know what? He is so important. Maybe we ought to give him the first part of our morning just for 10 minutes or 5 minutes and say, God, what do you want to say? I'm right here. Think about that. Who am I going to listen to? It's a choice that we make. And God said, listen, I, I, I want to speak to you, but I'm not going to overwhelm you. Hey, we're not puppets. No, we're, we're his people, his children, and he wants to share with us his heart. And, and go back to the story with Saul. When he saw that big light and he blinded him, when he heard that voice, he asked this question. He said, who, who are you, Lord? Kind of a tough question for you and I and 2016 to understand because he didn't say who are you God he said who are you sir the, the scripture really was saying he gave a term of respect in fact I bet, I bet he was kind of scared because it blinded him and he fell on the ground who are you and he said I'm Jesus sometimes God is just trying to get our attention and, and we need to stop and say God what are you going to do this situation, this road to Damascus, this light that came from heaven, this voice that he stopped long enough to hear changed his life. How do I know that? First Timothy chapter 1, verse number 15. It says, It's a trustworthy statement deserving full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners among whom I am foremost of all. 
Another place, another version said, he is the chief of all sinners. Anybody want to join him? Anybody want to say, hey, I'm a sinner, I'm in need of a Savior? Yeah? Paul said, listen, I realized. I thought I was somebody and realized I was nobody until I met the somebody who made me somebody. He is everything. He is God himself. We need to get real with God. Sometimes we need to get real with others because sometimes we put on this face, we put on these clothes, and we think, oh, I look good, when on the inside we are stinking in trouble. So number one, we need to realize that oftentimes our, our thoughts need to change. Number two, we need to hear the voice of God. Anybody know what the voice of God sounds like? James Earl Jones. That's got to be the voice of God, right? I know there's a couple other you know, good old movies that we can look at. But you know what? The voice of God doesn't sound like James Earl Jones. And it doesn't sound like my mom. I wish I could, wish I could hear her voice again. And it doesn't sound like my wife sometimes. <laughs> um, that was a chalkboard. I'm sorry. Did you see the chalkboard? She's fine now. She forgot. Okay. ADHD sometimes is a good thing. Um, yeah, she did. Lord bless you. Okay. I got to go back to my notes because what Jennifer just said. Sometimes we need to hear the voice of God. You know that voice that you hear that reminds you that you're somebody? Sometimes we have to hear his voice. And the more you hear that one person's voice that you value, that you cherish, the more that you hear that voice and know who that voice is. Are you with me? See, Julie can call, and she could even have a, a cough or not, not feel, and, and kind of, a, you know, you, you had a sore throat recently. I still know who she is, and not just because of caller ID either, um, because I know her voice. Um, I also can tell if she's upset or not by the tone of her voice sometimes. But you know what? We ought to be so intimately acquainted with God when we hear his voice that we know. How can I do that? Spend time with him. Factor. Who are you going to listen to? Choose it today. Choose who you're going to listen to. Paul chose to listen to that voice. Why, why do you persecute me, Jesus asked him. In Matthew chapter 25, verse number 45, it says this. And then he will answer them. And truly I say to you, to the extent that you did it to one of these, the least of these, you did it to me. Different story altogether, all right? But Jesus is speaking. And here's my point. Saul hears a voice from heaven. And he says, Saul, why do you persecute me? Did Saul ever persecute Jesus himself? Biblical people, y'all. No. Did he, did he ever? He was probably there. Saul was when Stephen got stoned. In fact, he was probably holding Stephen's coat at the time. Here's the deal. Whatever you did to the least of these, we did it unto him. 